Welcome to the eighth and final section in this course on Node.js for beginners. In this section, I want to cover a few miscellaneous topics that don't fall under one particular category. In this video, we are going to learn about the built-in cluster module in Node.js. Now, if you can recollect from the previous sections, I had mentioned that Node is single-threaded, which means no matter how many cores you have, Node only uses a single core of your CPU. This is fine for I.O. operations, but if the code has long running and CPU intensive operations, your application might struggle from a performance point of view. To help with this scenario, Node.js introduced the cluster module. The cluster module enables the creation of child processes, also called workers, that run simultaneously. It's also important to note that all created workers share the same server port. In simple words, the cluster module gives you a quick win when it comes to handling the workload in a Node.js application. In this video, let's understand more about this module with an example. I'm going to begin by creating a new file. No cluster.js. The idea is to first start with code that doesn't use the cluster module and compare it with one that uses the cluster module. Within the file, I'm going to copy paste a code snippet to save us some time. It is a very simple HTTP server, something that shouldn't be new to you if you watched the section on built-in modules. We import the HTTP module, create a server and handle two routes. In the home page route, which is the root, we have a simple response with plain text, home page. In the slow page route though, we have a for loop that simulates long running CPU work. It doesn't matter what the code is, but you just have to know this takes a really long time to execute. Once the for loop completes, we respond with slow page as the text. So we have one route, that should be fairly quick in responding and another route that will take a while before responding. We then listen to the server on port 8000 and a callback method is attached to lock a message to the console when the server is in fact listening. If the code is clear, let's now run node no cluster. We should see our server is running on port 8000. In the browser, I'm going to navigate to localhost port 8000. We see the home page. I will also open the network tab to monitor the time it takes to load the page. When I refresh, you can see the home page loads in about 3 milliseconds, which is pretty good. I will now open a new tab. Open the network panel and this time navigate to localhost port 8000 slash slow page. When I press enter, you can see this takes about 4.72 seconds, way slower compared to the home page. But this should not be surprising given the fact we have a long running for loop in this route. But here is the interesting bit. I want you to observe the time taken by both the routes when I load the slow page first and while this page is loading, quickly load the home page. Ready? Refresh, refresh. You can see this time slow page takes approximately 5.7 seconds but the home page also takes 4.9 seconds. The 0.8 second difference is basically the time I have taken to switch tabs and refresh this page. But it is pretty clear that home page, which would load in under five milliseconds, is now taking five seconds. Well, that is because the single thread of Node.js is blocked with this for loop 
and the server won't be able to respond to any new requests. Slash slow page is basically blocking the home route. Now one way to fix this is to use the cluster module. Let's understand its usage. First, let me explain with a slide how the cluster module works in Node.js. When we run node index in the terminal, the file is treated as a cluster master and this master is in charge of spawning new workers which run an instance of our node application. It is very important to note that the master is only in charge of the workers. Starting, stopping, restarting, etc. but does not execute the application code itself. It is not in charge of handling incoming requests, reading files, etc. That is up to the individual worker instance. Each worker gets its own event loop, memory and V8 instance. In doing so, we are able to share the workload across different instances without having to block incoming requests. Let's now head back to the editor and write code to distinguish between master and worker and ensure they are responsible for the right type of work. I'm going to begin by creating a new file called cluster.js. At the top, I'm going to import the cluster module. Now we need to execute two different snippets of code depending on whether the file is treated as master or worker. For that, we use the isMaster property on the cluster object. So if cluster.isMaster, we're going to log master process, process.pid is running. If it is not master, we're going to log worker process.pid started. When you first run node cluster.js in the terminal, node treats this file as master and sets is master to true. We can quickly verify this by running node cluster. Master process 3202 is running. Now let's focus on what code to run as master versus worker. As master, we need to create new workers. And for that, we use the fork method on the cluster object. Let's create two workers by calling it twice. And for the worker, we are pretty much going to run the same code that we did in the non-cluster file. I'm going to copy paste the code. So the master is in charge of creating workers and the workers are in charge of handling the incoming requests. We are now ready to see the clustering module in action. In the terminal, run the command node cluster. We can see that the master and two workers are running. Back in the browser, if we refresh home page, it takes 24 milliseconds. If we refresh the slow page, it takes 4.72 seconds. But what happens if we make the two requests in parallel? Please observe as I quickly reload the slow page first, followed by the home page. Refresh and refresh. You can see the home page responds right away in 2 milliseconds. The slow page continues to take approximately the same amount of time, 5 seconds. But it is clear that the second request is not blocked while the first request is being served. What is happening is 
The first worker with its node instance handles the first request. The second worker with its own node instance handles the second request. This, as you can see, leads to better performance. It is very important that you create two worker threads at minimum. If you create only one, it is the same as no cluster scenario. The master will not handle any incoming request, resulting in just one node instance responsible for both incoming requests. Now, I'm pretty sure you have a question in your mind. Why shouldn't we simply create a large number of workers using cluster.fork? That will ensure our app is performant, right? Well, that's not true. We should only create as many workers as there are CPU cores on the machine the app is running. If you create more workers than there are logical cores on the computer, it can cause an overhead as the system will have to schedule all the created workers with fewer number of cores. In case of my MacBook, I have 10 logical cores, so I should only ever create 10 workers to get the maximum performance. Anything more, and it is only hurting than helping. To verify how many workers you can create, head back to VS Code and import the OS module. In the next line, log os.cpus.length. Run the code and we see 10. Of course, this might be a different number for your machine. But wait, there is an easier way to do all of this. You can simply ask someone else to run your application as a cluster and also decide the best number of workers to create for your machine. And that someone else is an NPM package called PM2. Let's install it. The command is sudo npm install dash g pm2. Dash g is required as we intend to run it from the command line. Sudo is not required if you're on Windows. I already have this package installed, so please pause the video and run the command. When the command completes, we can ask pm2 to run our no cluster file in cluster mode. Remember, we are basically trying to replicate the cluster mode we have written manually. So the file to run is no cluster and not cluster. In the terminal, run the command pm2 start followed by the file name no cluster.js followed by the option dash i and we pass in zero. Here, zero indicates we want PM2 to figure out the optimum number of workers to create. If you specify the number as two, PM2 will create only two workers. If I press enter, you can see a table has been displayed. We see 10 workers in total, zero to nine. They all are online, which means we can head back to the browser Run slow page and quickly run home page. The home page still loads in 2 milliseconds and the slow page loads without blocking the other request. Really simple as you can see. Now to stop pm2, run the command pm2 space stop space no cluster dot js. The status now reads stopped. Now that was quite a bit to cover about the cluster module, but hopefully it all made sense. It is something that you don't need as a beginner starting out with Node.js, but a concept that is well worth knowing about. Please do read up more about the PM2 package for your understanding. Alright, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.